We're we'll talking about Argo workflows with Dagger functions today. Um, if you haven't heard of Argo workflows, um, maybe you've heard of Argo CD. This is a, a separate project, but kind of under the same umbrella um, and maybe often used uh, in conjunction with Argo CD and other Argo um, projects. But basically Argo workflows is, uh, as they describe here, a Kubernetes native workflow engine supporting DAG and step-based workflows. So essentially it lets you just define like arbitrary workflows using YAML uh, and run them um, within your Kubernetes cluster. So uh, that's nice for us because one of the use cases for Argo workflows uh, is CI CD. So you can kind of use it, um, especially when combined with um, Argo events, which is another distinct Argo project, but that can kind of hook up to your VCS and uh, use that with Argo workflows to create basically like a CI CD orchestration system within Kubernetes. Um, so that's where we're going to use uh, Dagger here to actually like define all your pipelines and code and then use Argo workflows to actually orchestrate uh, the execution of these pipelines. Um, so uh, if we go over here, uh, before we get into some YAML, I can show you like I've got this um, locally on my machine. I've got a kind cluster. Um, so I can say uh, kind get clusters, I think. And we can see that uh, it's got this super useful output that says I have a cluster called client or a cluster called kind. Uh, that's difficult. Um, and I can say uh, do cuddle get pods at dash n. And then this is in the Argo namespace. Uh, so basically, I have followed like the, the like super vanilla Argo workflows quick start to install the CRD into my cluster. And so now I've got this workflow engine running um, and we can see like a number of jobs that I've already run uh, just to prepare for this demo. Um, and then we have like the Argo server running here. So that's like the main thing that's going to orchestrate uh, the executions of these workflows. Uh, and so a workflow looks kind of like this. So you've got um, this thing that's a kind workflow. Um, and again, we've got that CRD installed in our cluster uh, and then if we skip past a bunch of this boring stuff, we've got this uh, part where we say we've got a container uh, and this is just Alpine and actually rewind a little bit. We've got, okay, never mind. So we've got container with Alpine and we're just gonna execute a command. Uh, and then we're gonna add some other properties to that container like some environment variables um, and maybe some volumes. And so my command here is um, I'm going to run dagger dash M. So with this module on GitHub, uh, this Golang module, I'm going to call the test function with the source in the current directory. And so this is like my, my dagger function and my pipeline that I want to run. And then the rest of this YAML is just telling Argo um, how to orchestrate this thing basically. Uh, so if we dig into that Argo part a little bit more, we can see uh, we've got this work dir slash work. Um, and that actually ties back to these input artifacts. And so all this is like Argo spec, but hopefully, um, you know, like the naming of things makes makes it make sense for like where things are coming from. But we have an input artifact uh, that we've called project source and it's that path of work. So again, that's where we're executing our command from. And in that directory, we're basically just gonna have this repo, which is my uh, greetings API project uh, on the branch main. And so this is where, you know, if you're integrating with Argo events or something, then maybe this could be a parameter so that when you've got, you know, pull requests or something or commits happening, then you can run this for specific branches or commits on that repo. Uh, but in this case, we're just gonna check out the main branch and then run uh, this test function against it. Um, and then the second input artifact we have here is the dagger CLI. And so that's going to be in the bin uh, with executable permissions. And that's just coming from the GitHub release. Uh, so we can see I've like hard coded the version of the Dagger CLI I'm using and even the architecture. Um, I mentioned I'm running uh, on a local cluster in Kyan. So this is on ARM64. Uh, so now within this little container, now I've got my repo and I've got the Dagger CLI, uh, but I want to have a dagger engine uh, properly configured so that I can, um, you know, have 
uh, connection to like Dagger Cloud and and um, uh, you know the best performance I can with this engine. And so the way I'm actually running that in this demo, we scroll up even more, uh, is this sidecar. So now I've got within this same YAML file here, we can say that my container that we just had that's running that Dagger command is going to have a sidecar. And that sidecar is going to be using uh, the Dagger engine at that same version of Dagger. Uh, it's going to be a privileged container. Uh, we've got this little health check and uh, the volume out. So now let's talk about these volume outs for a second. This, if we go all the way back to the top where we've defined these volumes, uh, we've got the Dagger socket volume and the Dagger storage volume. And in this template, these are both just empty dirs. So they're not like bound to the host or anything. It's just this um, directory object basically within um, within our Kubernetes. And so this thing, we have, again, socket and storage. If we go back to that sidecar, we've mounted both of these volumes to that sidecar. And so the storage one is that varlib dagger so that uh, we can have that um, basically local cache being reused between uh, engine runs. But the the cool thing is this dagger socket one uh, that's mounted at bar on build kit. Uh, and this is actually how, if we go down to our main container, where we have that same uh, volume being mounted uh, at bar on dagger, we can see uh, we've specified the host for dagger with this environment variable to be at that bar run dagger. And so now that that socket is actually acting as a bridge between our main container and our sidecar, uh, rather than trying to connect to it through like um, like Kubernetes routing, like specifying a sp specific pod or anything. We're just basically saying we've got this socket that these two containers are sharing. And so connect through that uh, thing. Uh, and it's going to be super easy. Uh, and then another additional piece to point out here is that uh, we're setting the Dagger Cloud token in our main container here. And this is using a Kubernetes secret. Uh, so my secret name is Dagger Cloud, and the key is token. Uh, so if I describe that Dagger Cloud secret, we can see that uh, we've got Dagger Cloud secret namespace default. I think I made one in Argo too, because that's where that thing lives. Um, and so it's got that in the data section here, it's got a token and it's populated. Uh, we're not gonna show my Dagger Cloud token in this demo. Um, and so all that together, I think I've described all the pieces, but to go over it again, like we've got this Alpine container and through this mounted socket, it's connecting to its sidecar, which is the engine, uh, which is a privileged container running the Dagger engine. And that's going to be the, the execution part of this. Uh, and then, yeah, let's let's uh, run this. So if I say Argo submit uh, dash dash watch, and then I'm going to pass this file. And it's cool to point out here that this is actually, I'm in the Dagger repo, and this is running this uh, YAML from the docs. Um, this is a file that you can see in our docs today. I have a, a PR open to update it. Uh, with the sidecar method that I'm showing right now. Um, and when we submit this, we're going to see, okay, things are running. And the watch, maybe there's more flags for it or something, but you don't actually get like log output. You just get to see like pods running, which I guess is um, kind of interesting for some people, but I, I don't find that interesting. So we're going to say uh, logs. Uh, so we're going to say Argo logs. And now we're getting all the stuff from the last run. Uh, or for the most current run. So I think, yeah, there we go. So stuff's running. And let's see. As that runs, I wonder if I could open that up in Dagger Cloud too. Let me pull it over here just in case uh, something I don't want to pop up pops up. Dagger.cloud. And let's make sure we're in my org. to sweet. So we can see it. Oh, it actually finished right now. So here's a run. Um, and we can see that command that we wanted it to run from uh, Argo. So that was that dash M with that Golang module calling test. And we can actually see 
uh, highlighted at the top here, the main output was that the the Go test passed in that module. Um, and then lots of other output here as well. Then hopefully over here, we can see that exact same thing, but maybe not as nicely formatted because uh, it's just dumping all the output from all these containers from Argo. Um, and what else? I think, okay, I mentioned it was in the docs. So if we go to docs.dagger.io and go over to integrations, let me zoom in, integrations, Argo workflows. Um, this is currently the old version of the workflow in here. Um, but again, I have a, a PR. So like in you know the next hour or so, this should be up, updated to the one that I just walked through. Uh, yeah, any questions? Otherwise, we can move on. Awesome demo, Kyle. Um, so, I mean, kind of a high level for folks in using this approach. They could think of that Alpine. Tell me if I'm right. You could think of that Alpine container that you had as kind of like that uh, that uh, place where you're going to have like a workspace container where you could be pulling down your project and installing Dagger and, um, and all of that sort of thing. Um, and then having the actual engine be in that sidecar uh, separate with uh, some storage that'll persist for cash and all that good stuff. So they could think of this Alpine container a lot like your like the Ubuntu GitHub Actions runner or your laptop OS or wherever you might normally run Dagger from. Is that a way to think about it? Yeah, exactly. This this Alpine could literally be anything, um, but. In this case, this is just a, a small image that I can use to um, act as like the client to the engine server. Um, and this thing, if I called this locally, we'd hopefully see the same thing, uh, which we can do. Uh, there we go. Source. And then, so we're going to call that same module, dagger-m, golang, test source. And instead of current directory, we'll pass in that repo. at main. And so now this is running the exact same thing, basically, um, where we've got that module, and then we're calling uh, test on it. And then the input is this repo's main branch. Um, and so there we go. Same exact output. Uh, nice. Except for my local machine. Very, very cool. And yeah, that would work the same, like you say, locally or in any other CI. Um, exactly. Can you show, I, and I, I saw it flash past, how does that install of the Dagger CLI happen in Argo? Yeah, so in Argo, you you specify these um, these input inputs to your um, container. Um, and in this case, we've got a couple of input artifacts. And so you have this input artifact that is, in this case, the Dagger CLI that's going to be dropped in this path uh, with this with these permissions, and it's at this URL. And so we do the same thing to get our project um, installed in that path as well, just using a Git source instead of HTTP source. Very cool. So instead of having a, you don't need the kitchen sink kind of an image here, but just very lightweight, just like Alpine with a couple, your project and a Dagger CLI and you're good to go. Yep, exactly. Very cool.